Okay, podcast three, and uh, I will just hear before I continue, excuse if I sometimes have to cough or clear out, but that's the chemtrailing. All of these little nanobots with their drills all, all over the place. And since I collapsed or uh, old timeline with a lot of the work I've been actually been doing the last four years collapsed yesterday, it's in my field and uh, I'm still clearing it out. And that's part of the process of transformation of energy or transforming energy is to find the counter information that is on a higher level and by that be able to transform it into a new type of feature where what was shown and com- became completely clear because when a timeline collapses, uh, collapses, it releases all of its energy patterns. And that's the sequences of information we're getting as visuals, as being drawn into the previous states and configurations we have had and what has been done to us and all of the layers of it. And that is where we need to go when we understand what is holographic. Holographic is not something that is projected into the room via some sort of machine. Holographic means that the unit contains the information system of the whole that it is part of. So that's why they just need one consciousness unit if it is imbued with holographic energy and insert that into their storyboard and by that <coughs> lingers up to their artificial timelines if they want to create more they create clones and replicates and yada yada don't want to don't want to go there that's the advanced information technology uh, uh, that uh, you have worked with in the advanced clearing work course material but what we understand here is that each unit energy units or consciousness units holds the information system of the level it belongs to. So that means that when we're talking about, okay, we're talking uh, the vibrational fields of which there are nine layers connected to the chiasm, and we have nine layers connected to the mind field that then develops into the perception field where it processes complex information systems. So we need to describe what are complex information systems, even though we have already touched ground with that in the transition science, transition sciences, right? So we already kind of got the foundational understanding of what that is. And I know many of you, you have listened to this and you have forgotten it because you have not built the neural network that is capable of processing this type of information because you have not cleared your emotional field. So you keep getting Getting drawn back into the old world order program and keep recreating the energetic parasites and the prohibiting technologies that are put there to prevent you from remembering this, to prevent you from accessing these complex information systems from where you would be able to build your perception field, from where you would be able to leave this reality. Okay, so that's why you need to clear your human emotions and get them under control. And that's also part of what the Buddha came to do. That was part of his mission statement. But he was focused on that group of males that existed in what we understand as India and came from some of the lunars of Atlantis. So this is also important to understand. Well, if you're not a lunar, you don't do the Buddhist teachings because you're not a lunar. You don't have the genetics for it. Again, this hybridization and contamination of the original teaching systems. So let us work in a way so we understand, okay, holographic principles. So what are they? I'm not talking about the principles of choices here or progression because your choices lead to progression. How you work with information and how you work with energy is part of your choice making. And you do the principles there to make the right choices so you lead into the highest purity rate. So instead, and I'm doing a choice here to make a video even though that I am clearing out while I'm doing it, but that's just burning off the energy and actually gives me more momentum to access more information systems, which I, by looking at it and working with it, can transform and clear out and disconnect both myself as well as you onto from whatever you have got access 
to there or the patterns that you are connected to, because this is for the highest good of the many. So that's part of principle seven. When you begin to work with the holographic dynamics, let us call them that so we don't get confused. When we begin to work with the holographic dynamics of our holographic network and the reality fields that we are composed of and are intrinsically interconnected with, you have to have the right commitment. That's principle seven. And there you begin to understand what is correct commitment. It's not a heartfelt thing. It is something that where you understand, I keep repeating mission statement mission statement. That's the correct commitment. What you're here to do is your commitment and it connects to your original consciousness units, which I explain in the template science course material. So holographic dynamics. And I want to put in here a little bit of example. So you kind of get first and foremost, we're talking about oscillation. And I had a little spider yesterday, one of these little brownie long, not daddy long legs, but they're similar to it, but they're smaller. They can get bigger. But, um, and it sits in its web and it has that ability to actually, um, vibrate itself up in frequency. And it does that by whirling around like a Sufi, right? In its own web. And it just whirls around quicker and quicker until it technically gets in invisible for your eye to see. And the reason why I know that's because I had one yesterday and I looked at it and it got spooked and it began whirling around, uh, upgrading its vibration by this round and round and round and round clockwise where it vibrated up. And when I exercise, I use the same technique. So I, when I exercise slow, so I, slowly, I work on the slower level of frequencies. When I exercise quickly, I do a higher type of energy so I can use the spectrum in a vertical manner when I exercise. So go from low impact to high impact. Or when I'm out greeting, as I call it, when I'm out walking, then I walk in a clockwise circle as well amplifying my pace for each round, getting higher and higher energy utilization and clearing processes. And the commitment there is not to get more energy myself. The commitment is to work with the reality field energies that will then align with my energy system and the consciousness potentials I have, which then gives me access to some of the original um, technologies of the construction. So that's the thing for me to do because it's in my mission statement. It's in my configuration. If some of you try to go out and do the same, you'll probably just connect to the underworld and you get something into your field. You don't want to get into your field because it's not part of your mission statement. So you don't have the code systems for gridding. And we know that because uh, during the spiritual teaching system period, uh, a lot of well-meant females joined up in groups. And some of the, the more ex-oriented males were there as well. And they joined hands and they were doing the grid work, as we know from um, some of the, for instance, the Klontzik Sciences or the Lisa Rene or what have you, joining up and trying to re-grid or connect to the grid work of our planet or, or the chakra system or the ley lines or whatever you want to call it and they in that actually contaminating it because they were not even near clear enough but that was the purpose all of the things that have been done during the stellar activation cycle were either to remove the energies and the template structures and the, the architecture of humanoid races under the Syrian bees back to the middle domain out of the human form inside this reality or to get humans to uh, literally destroy whatever was left of the viable um, network so that the dark worlds or the dark avatar could take over. So humans are always being used as a tool, hence the enormously important understanding of how to work with vibration, how to spin yourself up into a vertical alignment where you really begin to activate your higher levels of your energy system, of your vortices. I'm not talking your chakra system here, I'm talking about the three vortices. Because as long as you're still horizontal, you are a breeder worker. You're engineered to not elevate. You're engineered to recycle until you wear out and are dropped into the abyss. That's the enslavement. And you need to get that really into your head. So that's also kind of an incentive for, okay, you need to exercise and get up high in vibration because the bugs and the parasites and whatever, they don't like that. 
I know there are some of the insectoids that have been trying that. We have a lot of professional athletes that actually are insectoids. So they are, they know that they keep themselves on the highest purity rate with this extreme level of exercise up to four or five hours a day, making it their um, way of living. So they are upholding what we call the insectoid uh, uh, apins in that manner by having that huge group of people that are within professional sports. So hence also why there's so much sports news coming up now and everything is just <laughs> during the whole period of the nice last three years. Everybody, oh yeah, look at sports, whatever. Anyways, I'm not going to go further into that one. Just saying there are reasons why things are being promoted the way they are. So again, when we look at something, we give it energy, right? So also in the understanding. So we had the kind of vibration spinning up. So we get into a vertical position, which is why you eventually should go from your horizontal clearing work on the emotional field, get upright and do the vertical meditation where you begin to upgrade your frequency network that are part of your brain capacity and learning to control the different segments of your brain accordingly, which also means study of the brain anatomy, study of the processes of the body, study of the glands, study of the electrochemical processes, because there is a goal with that. For instance, when you learn that the adrenal gland are connected to the reptile genetics in the amygdala, and as a male makes you spin off, as a female, it is also connected to our ovaries. So it is connected to the progesterone and the, the uh, estrogen and the releasing of eggs, which are part of the enslavement contract that are under the scavengers, technically under Enki. So we thereby understand that when we are to clear out whatever is connected there, aside from what is shown with the insect for a triangle enterology, we also understand that on the limbic system level that goes with the pituitary gland, it is connected to our fear system that goes to the, the, um, the adrenal gland that are on top of our kidneys. So when we do clean out the connection points to what is in our X chromosome that ties us to the enslavement breeder programs, we are to alter our adrenal gland function and the fear that we typically have connected in the um, amygdala. Science tells us that females mostly respond with fear, where males have a tendency to respond with aggression instead when they are confronted with uh, a dangerous situation. And that's because the male amygdala is bigger than the female, so it responds with more reptile genetics. That connects again to the adrenal glands. It also connects to the kidneys. The kidneys are connected to key and the meridian system, and they are connected to the water filter and the, the processing of what we call um, um, clearing out of uh, waste products of our body. So we need to drink more water, amplify our water correctly. When we drink that, it then affects the kidneys and what they are clearing out. And if we are not in control of our kidneys, our skin will not be correctly operational to shed off what we call energies as well, which uh, we're kind of seeing those of us who are under that process of clearing out the, the chemtrail units uh, via our skin, which is some of the things I've been dealing with. But also it goes with the urine. It also goes with the whole circulation of uh, clearing the, the water level of our body. And it determines the, the cellular state of what we call the, the, um, the natrium uh, what is uh, potassium? Oh, what's the word in English? Forgot it. But the, your cells vibrate via what we call receptors that are opening and closing, all depending on the very, very small charge that is in the cell, in the, the, the perimeter of the, sh the cell. That is controlled by salt um, and uh, another uh, chemical. I can't remember what it's called. You can look it up. And if we have too salty food, for instance, we are ruining that process and it, it harms our kidneys and put them into overproduction, which then affects the adrenal glands because the adrenal glands are on top of the kidneys. And then that affects our stress system that is part of our limbic system. So therefore, you have a high intake of, of salt. Your heart will begin to do, 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 because your body is going into a stress due to the high level of intake of salt. 
just to give one example. So you can downsize the intake of salt. You can drink more water. But if you overwater your system, you're also watering out your kidneys and they become like these little um, gel-like kind of things. So they have to have the right environment. And that is part of the self-healing work to administer that. And by that, you're also administering your amygdala system. And if you change the kidneys and the way you process water, the way you process your limbic system and the fear production and your heart rate, then, and you actually alter the whole uh, um, insectoid gland in the root that's connected to the root that connects to the underworld, well, then you're also changing the way that your amygdala respond to situations, which you can also do in meditation, by the way, by seeing things and learning to control your fear flight system in meditation. So you can, in active visualization, using the frequency spectrum of your neural network to control the electrochemical processes of the body. And that's the idea behind the chakra system teachings, that you understand that they're just using symbols and sounds to get the quick fix on that one, because we know the neural network vibrates with visuals, as well as the understanding of the content of the visuals. And that's where I want to go when we talk about holographic information. So if, for instance, in the chakra system, you're working on your heart field and that typically has a deer connected to it. So what's the deer all about? Look at the deer out in nature. What's the dynamics? How does a deer respond to things? It's a beautiful creature, right? But it's also a fearful creature and it likes to hide and likes not to go. It's not attack. It's not predatorious. predatorious. It's, it's keeping to itself. It's uh, it's. Uh, as far as I know, it's only eating grass or leaves or berries or whatever. It's vegan, right? So it's a quite peaceful animal. It's also connected to the moon, by the way, uh, which some of you might have to work a little bit with. And you can go into Hindu mythology to understand what the deer is connected to, because it's both a deer inside this reality, but it's technically also connected to devas. It is connected to different, um, what we call Hindu gods, deities, if you like, that are also representing a different feature. So it has three layers to it. So it has the physical representation that gives you have, if you want to approach the deer, you have to be calm, you have to be kind, you have to be compassionate, you have to walk towards it. So you, you monitor these things in your heart field when you're meditating upon the deer that you have seen your heart field as the deer that you want to approach. So you have to have a kind approach to your heart field. Otherwise it will run, it will flee, it will hide itself, it will not present itself. You will not see the wonders of the deer. So when you have re reached the deer and you have got the right approach and the deer is not afraid of you, it will come and will put its hand, its head in your hands. And then it shows it's submissive. It is ready to be cleared. Then in that exercise in the chakra system, original ways, that's the color chakra I'm here referring to. You then see the deer decompose, so to speak. It vanishes it and then becomes something else. What is in the deer? Then it becomes a flower. Then you look at the flower. What's the features of the flower? And then it unfolds as a low Lotus. Okay, because you've studied Buddhism, you know, understand what the lotus is, and you understand that the lotus is part of what the crown is above water, the roots are deep down into the muddy waters. So it has a vertical level there. So you have the deer that's horizontal by your compassionate understanding of what the deer is. The deer has given itself over. The mammal level is now reactivated in your heart. And there it transforms itself into a lotus. What is the lotus? That's the mental field. How do you get the lotus to blossom? Right now it's just like it's, it's cooped up. It's just... The bud, it is not unfolded. It's crowned yet, as we're talking about with the crown chakra, right? It's not the crown because we're a crown on our head. It's because the lotus will unfold all of its leaves once you reach the tri the highest level of the chakra system. So now you build that from your heart. The muddy root goes into your, your root chakra where you need to clear the muddy waters for the lotus to unfold its content. And if you look into the lotus, you will see each of the leaves because you're kind of, with your vibration, you're prying it open, but slowly it opens up to your kindness and your compassion. And it opens up its leaves and there you see all of these little symbols on each and one of the petals. And there are, to begin with, 16 petals, and then you see how it unfolds into becoming more and more complex as it divides holographically with the different vibrational states that you are obtaining in this 
inner meditation where you're working with visuals to activate certain levels of energy in your energy system. And with that, you see all of these little symbols are golden and they begin to spark to life like little nectar that sparks out all little stars or little sparks. And then you see how it becomes a cloud and then the lotus vanishes as well and transform itself into all of these little spikes, which then can go up to your brain and begin to seed in what needs to be unfolded in the brain field to unfold the inner system. Because in the middle of the lotus, you have the two major petals that each goes into 96 divisions of itself, which is the foundation of the crown chakra, just to give that one. And once you get that into the center of your head and you rebuild the core center, again, done meditation work of kindness and compassion, then you are going into that understanding that that center is the middle of the brain. And I've talked about that in the whole integration class six, which you now can get for free uh, under the basic concepts on my website. So with that uh, understanding, you then build the foundation there by the kindness, vibration of kindness, the true commitment in your heart for the highest good of the many, because you have mastered principle six, which opens the lotus that changes into this beautiful um, pattern that is no longer a flower, but it just showed how you turned the, the normally it, it the, the, the it hangs with its head downwards and it became, it shifted around and began to rise upwards towards the uh, center of the head where these golden sparks are then beginning to build in the new neural network. I'm here envisioning a process for you. <clears throat> To amplify it at that point, the Buddhist monks have got their own sound, right? So that is where they are going into complete compassionate state where the heart field is so compassionate that it is nothing but kindness and light. And then they begin the Om and they are working with the Om. If you listen to the group of Buddhist monks, it is actually circulating in a round room, room manner when they're really doing it the right way. And you could do that too. But again, be mindful when you use sounds like that, you are making the sound. And secondly, if you have anything that needs to be surfaced and cleared out, it will surface. So that's a very powerful tool to show you what you have to clear out. And eventually you will learn that the outer vibrational sound of OM will then change to become the silent sound from where the symbol of OM, and that's not the one you have seen depicted, but it is shown there as a type of something has to be depicted, right? Then it becomes that center point in the middle of the 296 petal Aina Chakra, which then transforms again into a symbol that is completely yours, which will you will put into the middle of the center of your head. And from there, you will activate the guru system that builds what we call the five layers of enlightenment that are connected to the mind field, just to give you that uh, information, which I'm not getting out, given out on my take on Buddhism, but will give you here so you understand what holographic information is, how it transform as your energies transform, it transform what it shows you. It is interactive. So with that understanding, we'll kind of say, well, could you take, for instance, a, a, a Pegasus horse, <laughs> a horse and put it into your, your, your heart field? Well, you can do that if you come from the Pegasus system. But um, the deer is connected to the Buddha, so that's why I used that one and not the cobra and the snake and whatever. That's the Naga universe of it. So no, it is this this um, shy creature that is only accessible. You can only go to it because it's slightly magical if you have the correct vibration and you are uh, what we call in an innocent state. You have the correct commitment of why you want to approach the deer as in a, a mix of curiosity and kindness and compassion. And because your heart is calling to connect to the deer, not because you want to connect to the deer, but your heart is connected. It wants to, it reaches out to the deer itself. 
And with that, of course, with the secrets of Kalashakra, you understand that all of the animals that you're seeing are representations of some of your earlier configurations. Not that you have been a deer, but your brain uses that uh, understanding because it's a configuration we have inside this reality. So inside this reality, our brain will pick symbols or configurations or forms from where we understand the complex information system that it is. Of course, you can look at a deer and say, well, a deer is uh, physical. You can feel the, the skin of or the, 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 the fur of it. You can see how it looks with its little spot, the Bambi version of it, right? But I'll do the mature version of it. You can see the little tail. You, you can say, yeah, it has a heart, its organs and whatever, like we have here. You can dissect it in your mind, if you like, and see all the bits and pieces of it. But that's not the purpose when we do meditation on symbols or holographic information. Here we work with the energy. Of course, matter is energy, but that's just inside the base program. It's an anchor point. It's not important. What is important is the higher levels holographic information system that is behind. So we understand that what brings the deer that shyness and that version of whatever it is that has no words, you can use as many words as you like, but it doesn't change the sense of it. Holographic information is sensed. It's not spoken of. So when, for instance, some of you say, I'm working for the highest good of the many. No, you're not because you have not master principle one, principle two, principle three, principle four, and principle five, and principle six. And by that, understand what you're actually dealing with. You are still just working with the first of many, as the first of many, which is pillar one seven for most of you. So the sensing of the words are also part of the holographic information system. That ties into the code system of the left hemisphere. Let me use an example here as in the chiasm. I'm playing with a word there. It is originally Greek and means a cross. The cross we are crucified upon, but it's also going in with that di diagonal cross that gives us position in space. But it's also chiasm, as in relying or relating to the key energy. So it also connects to the energy of our body as well as the purity rate. So you see how we can play with words, it can have multiple understandings to it. But it also has a dynamic because I told you that that word is part of a thought form that teaches you how to work with timelines. So thereby you understand that your bodily energy is your key is connected. That's the life force is connected to the timelines. And you thereby understand going back to video one that I shared with you that when timelines connect or disconnect and, 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 uh, what you call it, are being destroyed, it affects our life force, it affects our key, it affects our heart field. And if we're not on top of that with the seeing what is coming our way, you, feeling that in our heart field, sensing it in our heart field, then our emotional field on all nine rings that are connected to that timeline will get contaminated layer by layer by layer. So the clearing work is, of course, that's why it took me quite a lot of hours to get through that. Seeing all of these things, transforming all of these things I'm seeing in the, the appropriate manner to clear out the rings and the configuration that were connected to that timeline. So when we talk about holographic information systems, we have again the kaleidoscopic understanding that if you change, if you spin it a little bit as you do with a kaleidoscope, right? You spin a little bit to the right, you, you activate a higher oscillation level as we saw with the spider, right? Did not help it though, it still had to go. <laughs> but it tried, it tried. It showed me that was the first time I saw it, which was interesting. So I, I observed it for a while. I knew they could do that, but I was just looking at it saying, yeah, you're not really speaking quick enough for me not to be able to see. I still see you, <laughs> so <laughs> not working, buddy. Anyway, so, so we understand how spin can put us into a high frequency. Okay, we understand that the heart field is sensing energy. That's why it's called vibration. We sense the energy. It's nothing to do with sound, but we can use sound as a bodily feature. But we also understand that that only works on the physical level, on the molecular level.
If we would, in, including when you do high impact exercise, find a tune that really has a beat. And as you push yourself further and further, you'll begin to create endorphins that are in, that's kind of that you, the human body, um, opium, so to speak, that gives you that rush of more energy that wants you to exercise more and get you beyond your personal limitations. It lifts you out of the whole, oh, I can't do that because you get kind of that the body learns, oh, I like this. This is good. And then it works with you because the body can do so much more as you begin to infuse it with the higher vibrational energies of your heart field of the nine layers you have cleared and are now st- not no longer stuck using all of its bodily energies in emotional thoughts and patterns and ideas and and belief systems and comfort zone systems and defense mechanisms and whatever that takes an enormous amount of the human energy to uphold instead of just clearing out the nine fields work your way through it and then understand that your fear system no longer kicks in because you have now dealt with so many things that you become this effective uh, clearer of your own energy system and you deal with whatever comes your way because at that point you are completely in the observer position of the frontal lobes and are clearing and recalibrating your energy system in your own energy work while you are seeing what you're seeing with your heart field kind of calming it down, understanding that your heart feel is like the deer. You have to be kind to your body. You have to be kind to who and what you are as an energy system. You have to self-heal. You have to maintain the body because it is like the deer. And if, if you're not working with the technical, it's an elemental, you'll get that elemental eventually. But it will be in the way for a very, very long time. And you have to work with it to clear it out. And it has to work with you, which is also part of what we could say correct commitment. You need to get your body on board with this work that we're doing here. So when we are working with holographic information, you now understand we're working with information that has many different features. It has insight-based program features. It has uh, what we call outer domain, middle domain, inner domain, and core domain, minimum four layers. But these four layers, these four domains has quite a lot of subdomains. It's only in the outer domain that we have nine layers which are connected to the top three levels that shows us that we are mastering pillar one, seven, two, eight, and three, nine. Then we have built the top a trinity structure that connects to our um, template system. And that goes with the reconfiguration of your mind field to be able to produce that core field uh, in the middle of your brain that activates the five uh, chakras of vortices, minor vortices in the neural network that allows you to work with what we call radiation energy. Hence, the sparking, but the sparking were there golden as from the lotus, it's golden. But when you go into working with the complex information systems, it can either be light blue or it can be white, all depending on how your brain chooses to process it. But you will also understand it can take on different types of coloration. But the moment you dip into what we call visual color code, you are then down in frequency energy. And therefore, it's not a good idea to work with colors. It is better to work with it as light, which is more in alignment with your original radiation energy. And radiation energy is undescribable. It's not like the sun. Not at all, has nothing to do with it. That's kinetic processes. That is a transformational process where heat is emitted due to the transformation of uh, chemical processes, frequency-based. So radiation has nothing to do with light per se, but it is called light because until you can see it with your inner eye and perceive it via the center in the middle of the brain that is connected to the inner system that has 96 petals that goes in polarity forces from where you can expand in all sorts of directions and begin to see complex patterns and complex systems which if you're being asked can you draw this impossible because they are holographic they are layer upon layer they are enfolded layers to the holographic information, all depending on your vibrational state will unfold a new layer of the holographic information system. 
So even though similarly as when you are looking at a rock, you can do the, the whole, uh, uh, just looking at scientifically, you can crush it, you can tear it apart and see what it's made of, and you can use machines to look into what it's made of. But you could also do it with your perception field. You put your rock between your hands, you vibrate your heart field up, so you vibrate the holographic network in the rock to the level where it begins to release its information. Then the rock will tell you, it's not an entity, but the information in the rock will show you visuals of the time area, the epoch, the civilizations that are around it, who has touched it, everything that's imprinted into its holographic network that for science appears to be its uh, chemical compounds. But all chemical compounds are information system in a solidified crystalline form. So if you upgrade the solidified crystalline form into being flexible holographic, um, information system that is and can be looked at as a network, but it's not always a network as you are accustomed to. That's just behind our reality field. But it can be enormously complex in all directions, all depending on how many layers you work with the holographic uh, information system. So if you're just working with it as in two-dimensional, you or three-dimensional, you will have the lattice network that you are uh, familiar with that are behind, for instance, computer program or computer um, animations. But if you kind of go with the, the fourth dimensional version of it, then this grid work, the lattice network, and I'm calling it lattice network. I know it's, it's a kind of a double up, but that's because for me, network is part of the, the, where it's connected to the, the original holographic network. And that network are more similar to what you would like, uh, if you envision the neural network of the brain and it sends energies and it sparks that with quantum principles. It's like a neural network looking like that sparked up in light. And then it has quantum principles. And it goes in and out of manifestation and it's visible when you are on the right vibrational type of energy. You can see that portion of the network, but if you're not on the correct vibrational state, it will appear dark or empty as we're seeing with dark energy. But if you vibrate up to that level, the network will unfold its complexity pattern. That's why I call it that or the configuration. And then you can connect via the neural network of your brain, which is then going into alignment via the radiation energies, will align with that information pattern. And there you then go in sync. You begin to vibrate with it. You become entangled into it. And the information that is in that portion of reality will be transferred to your neural network inside your brain. And that is how we're working with the higher order sciences. So with that understanding, we also understand that's the, the dynamics of contemplation. So we contemplate, contemplate via that dynamic of the link up to the holographic network that we are first seeing as something that is in front of us a little bit further out. Then we we connect to it via our heart field. We vibrate up so it no longer is something that's at a distance, but we're kind of, it's getting closer and closer until we're in it. And then it becomes part of our brain. And then the center in the middle of the brain begins to spark out to the five minor centers, frontal lobe, crown, or top of the head, and the ultimaire. And it connects to the heart field in a specific way, which then begins to pump information upwards and backwards as a feedback loop between it is now seeking in our heart field the correct layer of our vibrational field to get the right information that will release and unfold the information that is in that now inserted holographic network into our neural network that for a short period of time will imprint itself and become part of our neural network. So with that, we vibrate up to whatever level that is, and then it will begin to use the left and right hemisphere to either give you the visual content or the left hemisphere to give you the words that your brain can find equivalent to. But if you link to a network that is not uh, within the English language, then you will, the brain will have issues with translating the information into verbal um, no, um, words or nouns and, and verb and verbatims and whatever you have. Sorry, my brain is crashing a little bit here. Um, and 
translate it into something. And it takes practice to do that, to develop concepts to what you're seeing. And in that, when I'm actually talking about the holographic network, that's why I'm always stumbling upon it because I know what it's called originally, but my brain has no language for it. So I can't pronounce it. The language center hasn't got that. I got it as a symbol and I know what that symbol is. And I know how to use that symbol to access different levels of the reality network to get me transferred to the different positions and localities within the holographic network where I need to position myself and via my influential sphere vibrate it up so that my perception field can connect to it, get the imprint of it, draw it back into this physical form and then work with it to build that complex mind field pattern that my brain needs to have to be able to operate with that level of information. And the first tool I have is the visual side, the visual cortex, right? So that's behind our head. So we can amplify that putting our hands there if we like, but we also need to train the right hemisphere to deduce and, and decode the visual content. And then the last piece of the triangle is the left hemisphere. So it's all about how good are we to make our brain work as it's supposed to being the decoder of information systems. And as you work with that in contemplation, then you are, I'm here, when you do the whole Project New Reality front page, there are some bullet points there. And when we work with the high order sciences, I said we are to contemplate upon the information to integrate it. We have now covered that one. Three videos, right? We are to learn to activate the energy units of our brain and mental field according to what we have learned in meditation. Covered that one. We are to build spiral patterns from the information. Oscillation. Vibrate up. Covered that one. We must learn... What we learn must be processed into energies of a higher order from where we can build a new energy system. That's the next step. And the portion of the holographic network I connected to, that's why my brain crashed because I imposed myself or it got it into my field, has some pretty old actual Demurian code levels for reasons and purposes. The last time I was working with this type of classification and configuration with the network, we're apparently in the times of Lemuria. So that tells it's something for me when I see these code systems, it's not that I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, hmm, I wonder what it is. It, right away, it gives me what it is because I already have it stored in my original energy system, in my original consciousness unit. So by connecting to that point is where my template architecture tells me you collapsed that timeline was collapsed yesterday you have cleared it out you have recalibrated your energy system now you're being lifted up to a next level which then connects you to that point as in kind of you seeing the lattice network of reality as this lattice uh, holographic grid and you're then zooming in and it becomes part of you and then it imprints into your neural network and then it begins to release its code systems as it reconnects to your perception field and by that begin to develop the rings of the mind field. So whereas we have the rings of distortion of the emotional field and need to transform these, the rings of our mind field needs to be recreated because they have been taken from us and have not been used for a very, very long time. So therefore, we understand the learning processes of the high order sciences is not a linear learning exercise. It is a psychic energetic state of awareness and the co-systems behind whatever state of awareness we have. So what we have knowledge of defines our energy system. What we have knowledge of determines what we can perceive. And the consciousness units are built from these two conditions. So if your knowledge is base program, then you have a base program energy system. If your knowledge you have is the higher order sciences, your energy system will operate within the network settings of the higher order um, sciences. 
So if you have a neural network that works on frequencies and your basic knowledge is base program, you will perceive base program. If you have knowledge that goes with the higher order sciences, your neural network will vibrate accordingly and you will perceive the higher order realities. It is that simple and that complex, and it has many layers to it, as you kind of understand here, me taking three videos to explain <laughs> these seven bullet points. So when we work with uh, holographic information systems, we understand it is a process of clearing. It is a process of understanding. It is a process of integration. It is a process of mastery of energy and consciousness. It is a process of having worked correctly with the principles. It is a process of learning and understand the reality field we are part of and why we are here. And it is a process of understanding who we are and what we have the capacity for, because we can want as much as we like in the entire world to be what we are not. So if we don't have the consciousness potential for it, because when we got sucked into this reality field, we were on a lower level, then the energy work and the work on the timelines and the clearing work is the only way to get more consciousness potentials. The more you clear, the more you will develop the deeper aspects of whatever few genetics you have got left. The more you master the rings of the emotional field and learn to vibrate, the more complex the few units you have left will unfold. And that is why the counselors have had no issue with removing the book of life and the upper levels of the templates in the library. Because what we have got left is in the one seven pillar and that is enough to build what we need in our energy system to get into the middle domains we don't need more than that but we need to follow the principles and the rules of engagement to the dot and that is what has been mirrored into all spiritual teaching systems as moral ethics don't break the laws no matter where you are don't break the laws because the laws are energy and it's all about energy and how you utilize energy. Thank you.